the BBC presents Desert Island Discs. In this program, a well-known person is asked the question, if you were to be cast away alone on a desert island, which eight gramophone records would you choose to have with you? Assuming, of course, that you also had a gramophone and an inexhaustible supply of needles. The program's introduced by Roy Plumley. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? On our desert island on this occasion is a large man with a flourishing moustache. He's a Cambridge graduate, an ex-RAF pilot, a Sussex farmer and rider to hounds, president of the Barnes Brass Band, and you may have heard him on Take It From Here. That's a radio show. Professor Jimmy Edwards. Thank you, Plumley. You are, I believe, asking me to suppose that I've been cast away on a desert island. That's exactly it, and all you've got with you is a gramophone. Oh, I can't imagine anything more ghastly. Must I have a gramophone? Oh, but Edwards, I can't believe you're not fond of music. I mean, you, one of the most eminent musicologists in the racket. Well, I would hardly, well, I You've would. given so many instructive and enjoyable musical lectures on the air. Well, I, 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 yes, I know, but I mean, always as a creative musician, blowing my own examples. Now, if I could take my euphonium onto the island, I could give myself endless enjoyment and keep myself fit. It's no good arguing, Edwards. You have a gramophone and that's all, and it's hand wound. And uh, eight records, please. Eight? I will oblige. Thank you. Now, my choice of records is going to fall into two categories. Records of brass instruments and other records to remind me of certain incidents, aspects, and or phases of my meteoric career. Vote for Edwards. Carry on. Well, now then, the first record is a brass band piece. Yes. Yeah. Jimmy, how and when did you first get this enthusiasm for brass? Oh, well, now, that's a question. It started when I was at school. Uh, on Monday evenings, we used to have army cadet parades, you know, what we used to call officers' training corps. You were at the same school, you remember them. I do, indeed. It came to my notice that while all the other cadets were marching about in the hot sun, there was a class of person known as a bandsman who sat in the cricket pavilion and blew melancholy notes on a bugle. And that was your first interest in music? Yes, a sedentary interest. Although, of course, about twice a term we were expected to march in front of all the others and play our one tune. Oh, that tune. Yes, I remember it. That's not the one we're going to have now, is it, please? Well, it isn't, actually, because that was just a, a, a bugle tune. What we're going to have is a proper band, and experts, too, the Foden Motor Works Band, a cracking good band, playing a bit of the Three Bears Suite by Eric Coates. <laughs> Thank you. 
certainly sounded different to our band. Was your one tune with the OTC band as far as your musical education went? Oh, good gracious me, no. I also played the trumpet in the school orchestra. And talking about the trumpet leads neatly into my next record, which is a chap called George Swift, playing a tune called El Fried. Terrific virtuoso stuff, this. He's got wonderful control, and he launches himself out into tremendous arpeggios. Uh, Edwards, arpeggios. Do you think um, arpeggi... Well, I've been to school since you have. You know? We won't <laughs> yes. fall out over an arpeggio. What is a... Re yeah. This record does a double job, because apart from being a joy to listen to, it will also remind me of some very gay times we were having when I first heard it, mm. when the RAF sent me to Canada on a flying course. <sighs> I'm only just recovering from that transatlantic hospitality. Well, here's the record, Elfried. That wasn't exactly the same record that you had in Canada during the war, Jimmy, because uh, George Swift has recorded Elfried twice, and that's a comparatively recent version of it that he's recorded with Eric Robinson's orchestra. Ah. Now, Jimmy, what sort of castaway do you think you'd be? How would you face up to life on a desert island? First of all, can you cook? I can boil an egg. Oh, now, don't make vainglorious statements, Edwards. You can boil an egg on the mainland, yes, with an alarm clock for timing of three minutes, but... Uh, could you accurately estimate three minutes by the sun? Well, no need for the sun. All I've got to do is to play a record. And, of course, one ten-inch record plays near enough three minutes. Well, that's very ingenious. Well, that's me all over. <laughs> well, it seems to me you have the makings of a very promising castaway. Any other assets? Assets? Well, I'm not a bad shot if I had a gun. Which you wouldn't. Well, well and then I'm fairly good at trapping and stalking. Fine. Well, I don't think we need bother to send a rescue ship for you. You're quite all right. Well, I think you better send that ship as quick as you can, actually. Uh, when it does arrive, they'll find me looking and acting like that chap in Treasure Island. Ben Gunn, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that whiskery old chap. <laughs> you look a bit like him already. Uh, uh, and in a senile, nostalgic sort of way, I should probably still be doing my music hall act to an audience of monkeys. Well, it's your disc jockey activities to the monkeys that we're interested in. Right, well, now, the next record I choose is one of those ridiculous bebop nursery rhymes that dear old Ray Ellington does. They amuse me enormously. he got a lovely sense of humour, that man. I think my favourite is Little Bop Beep. Now, once upon a time, quite a long while ago, a shepherdess lived near a city. From her bonnet to crook, she was dressed in new look. She was young, she was sweet, she was pretty. She hadn't a care, her sheep were all there. By her singing, she kept them contented. When one day she looked round, they couldn't be found. And little Bo Peep went demented. <laughs> Anyone seen my sheep anywhere? When little Bo Peep had lost her sheep, she searched in the fields and the dales. She asked Jackie Horn about the woman in his corner, for had he caught sight of their tails. She climbed up the hill and asked Jack and Jill, but they'd been too busy all day. She asked the three blind mice who were shooting dice, and they couldn't care less anyway. Now old Mother Goose wasn't any more use. She said, don't you know the rhyme? 
I'll leave them alone and they'll come home all in their own sweet time. But Bo Peep had to hurry and she started to worry as she went down a great long street. She looked in at her door, do you know what she saw? A sheep with a different bleat. Meh! Blue do blue be do be da blee ah. Blee ah ba do ba oom do bop. Meh! Never heard bebop before When Bo Peep used to sing It was nothing like swing Things like trees Or because such a bore So little Bo Peep sings Bop to her sheep She's certain they'll never more roam She now knows that swing Is the only real thing To keep those lambs safe at home Any hour of the day You can see them at play Bo Peep and her little hip sheep they sing themselves hoarse, never think of a mint sauce. And of course, they call up a bop peep. Now let's have something for sentimental reasons, something to remind me of all those Sunday afternoons in a BBC studio when I might have been lying in the sun in the garden. <laughs> something to remind me of Take It From Here. An old-time ballad by Bentley. Ah, no, no, not that. What I was really thinking about was a song by the keynotes. I'm rather partial to Policeman's Holiday. This is the song about the lads who found the beats. Their courage is undaunted and they're noted for their feats. But once a year he hangs his belt and helmet on the wall and he's off to take a holiday with wife and kids and all. La 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 Once a year the cup the leaves his feet In the sea he pops his great big feet Watch him walking on the golden sand With the bathing beauty holding his dance band, Plumley. Fond of dancing, Edwards? Well, more as a listener than a performer, Plumley. But an appreciative one, no doubt, Edwards. Indubitably. And when I do listen to dance bands, I think the one I enjoy most is Sid Phillips. Mm. And I'm one of those reactionary people that likes old tunes better than new ones. You like old band leaders too, don't you? You listening, Sid? Dear old Phillips. Do you remember that programme the three of us used to do together? Ah, yes. We were both playing juvenile leads in those days, Edwards. I remember... 
I cracked that rather good joke about Phillips having begun his professional career as a member of the quartet in which Gilbert and Sullivan played tenor sax and drums respectively. Well, let's listen then to Sid Phillips and his pink hussars playing soothing music. What tune do you want? Stumbling or thereabouts. <laughs> program of ours, of course, was the only one on the air in which the band was as old as the jokes. What next? Next, I'm going to get back to brass. Another brass band record? No, no, uh, we won't have another one of those. This is an orchestra this time with a soloist on the French horn. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, is the most difficult brass instrument there is. I know, I've, I've tried to play, I've, I've tried them all, you know, mm -hmm. from the trumpet, the trombone, the euphonium, and the French horn, I couldn't play, it was beyond me. Why? Well, it's uh, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> the mouthpiece is so small, I've got such a big mouth. And the moustache is so big. Well, that is the point, you know. Mm. Now, the most brilliant horn player we have in England, of course, is Dennis Brain. And I've chosen a record of his, part of Richard Strauss's horn concerto. It's a beautiful, if somewhat melancholy, sound. <laughs>
Now, a record by a comedian, the best comedian I ever saw. Who was that? Sid Field. I owed a tremendous lot to him, you know. He helped you, did he? Most generously, yes. In 1945, waiting to be slung out of the RAF and resigning myself to becoming a schoolmaster, I used to go into the Prince of Wales Theatre in London to watch Sid Field. Mm -hmm. One day, by pure chance, I found myself standing next to him in a pub quite near home, and I spoke to him told him that I'd done a lot of comicking in the footlights at Cambridge and in the RAF, that I was a raw amateur, that I knew nothing or, and nobody at all in show business, but I wanted to have a go. Mind you, he didn't know me from Adam, but he gave me some excellent advice. He introduced me to his agent. He couldn't have been kinder. And as a comedian, he couldn't have been funnier. Whenever I hear this record of his golfing sketch with Jerry Desmond, I can see it all. Now, get hold of your club and do just as I do. Are you ready? Now, back. Back. Slowly back. Slowly back. Now hit it. I'll never hit it from here. From where? Oh, what are you doing back there? Because you've just said slowly back. You must have said it. Otherwise, I'd never move. Oh, what am I doing back here? You never said it. Dear, you daft, stupid thing. When I say slowly back, I don't mean slowly back. I mean slowly back. That's the finish. That's the end of everything. <gasps> Listen, please. What? When you say slowly back. Yes. You don't mean slowly back. No, you mean slowly back. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you silly, you should have said. <laughs> uh, never mind, Sidney. Don't be discouraged. Try again. Again? I've never had a go at it yet, have I? Go on, hit it. Oh, oh wait a minute, there's a girl coming. Well, darling, as I was saying, you'll be absolutely thrilled to bits when you see it, because it really is lo... Well, that's the fourth ball I found today. How silly of people to leave them lying about like that. I mean, you think people take them off care. Don't you? They're, um, <laughs> they're not supposed to do that, are they? You're quite right, they're not. Never mind. Put another ball down. Very That's well, right. then. Now, look, if you hold the club... No, don't you say anything at all this time. All right. Get, get out of it! What are you talking about get out of it for? Tell the people to get out the way. You can't talk to people like that on a golf course, you idiot. If you must know, there's a right way and a wrong way to talk to people. A nice word to use. What? This is what you do. You shout... Oh, uh, say say what? You shout, oh, Tom, he said, Tom. Get out of it! <sighs> now oh. look, now go on, try and hit it this yes, time. Let me have a go by myself. Yes, go on then. Get it! Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, you missed it. Yes, I know. Mind, I might knock it that way. Oh. <laughs> no, relax, relax. No, not all over me, you chump. Go on, belt it. Not with your cricket belt. Well, then. Get down to it. Get up. What are you saying get down to it for, then? I mean stand up and get down to it. Oh, I can't. That's it. The finish of everything. I'm going home. I'm going home. Come here, Sidney. It's no use at all. You'll never be a golfer. You take the game much too seriously. Well, what a thing to say. Yes, you'll be all right when we get to the 19th. The 19th? Yes. I thought you said there were only 18 holes on a golf course. So there are. Well, what are you talking about the 19th for? The 19th is the clubhouse. That's where we get a drink. Oh, ho. And I've been messing about here, learning to play golf. Yes. Get out of it! <whistles> oh! Get out of it! Shh. Watch a performance. Lovely stuff. Now, your last trick, or Jimmy, what's that going to be? Well, a good noisy one this time. The storm music from Peter Grimes. Are you fond of opera? Well, frankly, Peter Grimes is the only opera I've ever really enjoyed. I I've seen it twice. What's your objection to all the others? Well, no objection, but just I've never been quite able to accept all the operatic conventions, you know. I, I, I want to giggle <laughs> when they sing these silly words like, a pretty weight, a pretty weight, you know. That's all. But with Peter Grimes, there's nothing stylized about it. You can believe it all. You forget it's an opera. You forget it's anything but an exciting story with exciting music. Music that's sufficiently modern to be enjoyed for its freshness and not modern enough to give you indigestion. I think it's wonderful stuff. <laughs>
Well, there you are, Jim. That's your eight records. Now, you've got one more choice to make. You can take with you to the island a luxury object. You can take one thing with you, but nothing useful at all. It mustn't be anything useful. Well, I told you at the beginning, I want to take my euphonium. You know, it's a musical instrument from the Latin. You, what a phony, shocking, um, noise. <laughs> you wouldn't call that useful, would you? Well, providing you promise not to live in it, Jim. All right. And thank you, Jimmy Edwards, for letting us hear your choice of desert island discs. A pleasure, my dear Plumley. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. That program, Desert Island Discs, was devised by Roy Plumley and introduced by him in the London studios of the BBC.